in the Def Jam seat. We're talking mm-hmm. about being in the violator seat. Mm. You know, when everything was popping. Mm, We're talking right. about when Chris Lighty was the commander of an amazing, powerful ship that touched almost every aspect of the culture that we know it today. And yeah, when absolutely. the music industry was was still powerful. Right. Absolutely. Was still you could still be royalty there. Yes. How did you end up working with Chris and Violator and Def Jam? Well, oh gosh, you want that long story, huh? Okay. Let's make it short. Let's, Let's make, make it, it short. short. Where do I take it from? Um I was working with Trackmasters mm-hmm. and beating the pavement, mm-hmm. didn't have a Rolodex or any contacts. I sat there, you know, we hung our little shingle in the basement of a residential building. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys remember Steve Salem. Yes, and I remember Steve, Steve was yes. in the building with us, too, and waited for the phone to ring. And then I realized, oh, it's not going to just start ringing mm-hmm. on its own, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So I started getting out there and meeting people. And actually, Chris knew um, the group that I was working with, the A Team. I don't know if you mm. remember them. They were I an remember extension A-team. of Chub Rock. Yes, remember that's that? right. That's right. Signed to Select Records. Select Records. Yes. Yeah, so um, R.I.P. Exactly. <laughs> Met you know Chris through that and and just trying to get the Trackmasters work. And you know, of course, we spent I don't know a year and a half, two years, really grinding it out. I mean, having like what there was five of us. If we had five dollars, somebody had to spend the night in the office because we couldn't all afford to go home that night. Mm -hmm. You know, it was those lean times and we got on a bunch of great projects and it takes a minute for those projects to come to fruition. And um, the minute, you know, things started hitting the airwaves and all the hard work that we had put in finally started paying off. You know, dudes started looking at each other like, yo, you wasn't in the studio that night when we wrote that. What do you mean? He you wasn't shooting with that? me in the gym. And you wasn't, do- you know, and I was like, ah, oh, here we go. Right. There we go. You know, so unfortunately, the guys decided that they were going to go their separate ways. And I was actually going to go out to Atlanta. Mm. And to do what? Uh, to work with Alex, who was working with L.A. and, mm. and Perry at the time, Pebbles, okay. his okay. wife. Mm. So we were going to work there. And uh, I went to see Chris because at that point we had developed, you know, a friendship. And, right. you know, we were doing a all rapport. these things. A, a rapport. Absolutely. And I was like, yeah, you know, this is what's happening with the guys. And I'm probably going to go to Atlanta. And Chris was like, nah, you know, why are you going to do that? You need to stay here. I'm like, stay here and do, you know, what? I knew what the opportunity was out there. And he at the time was um, still at Rush. Mm. And Rush was just kind of, you know, disbanding right. or whatever you want to call it. They were going, They were transitioning, exactly. It was this Columbia, Columbia, Columbia Days into Universal? No, no, no. This was... Um, Rush on uh, uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Street, Street going into 160 Varick mm, Def Jam mm, first Def right, Jam right, building right. and he was like you know I'm gonna do Violator Records we just signed Foxy Brown mm. Warren G you know and he was like my also, roster's expanding my ro- well uh, I'm going over here to be the VP of right, A&R right. Of Black Music over there and that's gonna be the primary focus and at the time I you know was probably a year and a half two years into the management thing and I was like well you know what's gonna happen they had like leaders of the new school and Tribe mm. Called Quest and Mob Deep and all those mm. acts that assigned to Rush. And um, he was like, oh, you know, we're going to have to figure that out. And I really just came in to help him transition right. and saw an opportunity there with the fact that there were these artists that really didn't have management. And literally at that point, we just decided, like, there's Violator Records, newly formed on Dev Jam. Why don't we just do Violator Management? Mm. And I remember being in that little cubicle office with no windows and that phone ringing and picking it up, violator management, and Leor on the other line. Who the fuck is this? You know, mm. there's no violator management. It's <laughs> Def Jam Records. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you, so initially, right off the bat, you bumped heads in a sense. Oh well, it wasn't really bumping right. heads. It was Leor going like, "What the hell are you doing up in right. my office?" Right, right. You, 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 you're in my building Did using you just my set Xerox, up shop in my eating shit? on my shit, basically using yeah. my Xerox paper Absolutely. for your stationery. Absolutely. And not repping me 100%. <laughs> but it was all good. I mean, you know, Chris's, uh, Leo's relationship with Chris was that of a father and right. son. And, you know, he definitely wanted to see him excel. So he gave us the opportunity to kind of build that from scratch. But that was kind of the beginnings of it all. Now, was yeah. Russell at the time uh, in, involved? Yeah, Russell was in the building. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was, he was still, you know, very active with Def Jam. Right. Yeah, Kevin Lyles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a magical time, would you say? It was an absolutely magical mm. time. You know, it was... Uh, music 
was still moving. People the industry was still in a developing. Way that, mm-hmm. Yeah, there was the potential was endless. The possibilities were infinite. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It was an, an amazing time. The money was there. Mm. The you money know, was there. The Pre money file was there. sharing. No file sharing. No file sharing. The money exactly. was there. The tours, the and, touring, and, and the stars were stars. The stars you know what I'm saying? Stars. Absolutely. Who, who, it, it was who impressed time. you during those days, star wise? Like who definitely had that star power that you were like, you know what, this person. LL cool I mean, J. listen, I, th- that's crazy. You took that right out of my mouth. Absolutely what I was about to say. I was about to say, think about who our roster was. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? There was LL on Dev Jam. I remember one of the very first projects was, you know, LL saying to me like, yo, I got this idea for this song. You think you could get Boyz II Men? Mm. And that was kind of one of the first times I made my little power move on right. the record side, you know. And he thanked me on the record. That was the first, Ooh. you know. How, how so, did you? How did you land a, boys to men? That is a very funny story. I was dating a guy who lived in Willingboro mm. and who happened to be like neighbors with them. Right. So that was like a stroke of luck. You so, know so, so once again, yeah. once again, the doors just opened up for you. It was just opportunity, right. just intersected with you and know, being there and being capable of taking full, and being ready to go, being, being ready, ready to, to grab. Go. Right. Like, yo, do me a favor. Can you call your homeboy over there? What kind of person is LL? He's great. Mm. He's absolutely. I mean, you know, he's just, he knows who he is. And I respect that in somebody who's so very clear about who they are. And I think that, you know, what he represents, you know, comes through in his music, comes through in his philosophies, comes through when you're speaking to him. You know what I'm saying? He's he's very clear about who he is and he represents that fully. Right. Who, who, who else? So, name some of the other stars that you work with. Nori. Then, like, no, no. Let her talk, uh, man. Bust, let her talk. Busta Rhymes, Missy. of course. I can't, you know. Busta. Busta. Dallas, uh, Dallas, let her talk. I'm Dallas. hype. Can I, I, can I not be hype? <laughs> yeah, you, let, let her be okay. hype. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mona. I apologize, uh, no, no worries, darling. Busta, I refer to as my firstborn. Mm. You know How what so? I'm saying? Because you've seen I him mean, grow. Oh, absolutely. I mean, listen, when I hooked up with Buster, he had little dreads. You know what I'm saying? Uh, That was straight off of, you know, coming off of leaders and stuff. And it was just the the power that he commanded on that stage. You knew you were witnessing something special. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm talking about. When I go back to what stars were, they moved you in a way. The music Mm -hmm. that they were making, watching them perform, you know, it did something to you where you knew you were making magic. You knew you you were changing, shifting. You know what I'm saying? What was Buster's mind state making that transition from being in a group? To go embarking on a solo career. Listen, Busta was the Beyonce of Destiny Shaw. Mm. He, knew he knew he was mm-hmm. destined he knew. for. He you knew. Know? Mm-hmm. It was all very clear. If he, if anybody didn't know, they were blind, deaf, and dumb. Let's mm-hmm. keep it real. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's uh, th- his presence is you know says it all. His presence is overwhelming. I mean, and to still be here doing what he does. Mona Scott Damn it, turning sorry herself guys. off. No, to, to no, still no. Be here. Go in, go in. <laughs> Doing what he does so many years later. I mean, there are certain things that defy logic, that defy convention. You know, and I and I'm one of those people. And and that'll take us into my transition into television. You know, I'm one of those people that believes that there are certain, you know, people who are gifted. And right. when I say gifted, I'm not saying it kind of as a rhetorical phrase. I'm talking about this is some otherworldly, mm. you know, Thing that has been bestowed on you. It's, it's, an, it's a mystical thing. Real. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It is a mystical thing that defies convention. It defies right. explanation. When, mm. you, you know, Busta Rhymes does that to me. When I watch him perform. When I, you know, Missy in the studio mm. does that to me. Mm. Like, where is this coming from? You know, Mona, I would say, I would argue that, you know, and, and we've had, we've had hundreds of stars mm. that we grew up with, that we grew up appreciating being fans of. When I look back, I don't think there's ever been a greater stage performer mm-hmm. in hip hop than Busta Rhymes. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Except LL. No. Well, I think Except LL. Let Mo, what was up? Mo? Okay. I mean, listen, they both bring something incredibly unique. You yes. know what I'm saying? They mm-hmm. both are deep mm-hmm. with. And I'm not hits. taking yes. anything away yes. from right. LL. Yes. There's, but I mean, LL is a lyricist. He spits those rhymes, and they're undeniable. And he's got an energy level that yes. gets you revved up. L- Busta L- is an entertainer in a different way. Yes. Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. His flows, he ch- switches mm-hmm. them up. Everything about the show. He puts on a show. He right. and Spliff Star get on that stage right. and they entertain you. I, I mean, Busta runs for 25, 30 minutes brings such a level of energy that, you know, you it, it's it's incomparable. No a- one absolutely. does that. For, but LL, my in my opinion, doesn't bring it as, as frenetic as Busta, but goes an hour long. And, and he, you... L- L- by his damn self. Yes. Can you say that? By his Back damn self. Back inside to the... Uh, uh, never, never before have I seen one rap 
performer do that amount of time. That well, LL is a mountain. He's a mountain, and he's his presence. I is think you have be to pause felt. yourself on that. Mm-hmm. Is, 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 that is that a pause? A I, I don't know. He was he's a was, mountain. He's a mountain. Is, is he was, a, nah, you stra- you reaching on that. One. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I received I received that pause. Yeah. I, received, I remember I received seeing Bust at a small venue. You remember Transit, the clothing store that opened yes. up on yes, Broadway? Yes, absolutely. I remember he performed yep. for the opening of yep, that. Absolutely. And I saw this brother hanging off the fucking rafters. 